Jen friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues. Chinese, what they have done is, in their own territory, in, in the part that is controlled by China, there they have started building structures. But unfortunately, those structures face Uttarakhand. You see, what they did in Kashmir, they have done the same thing in Pakistan. Send the poor people's son to die, send the poor people's son to face the bullets. Alright? Jen friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues. You must be wondering where I am, why I'm wearing warm clothes. My friends, I'm in Kashmir, beautiful Kashmir. And I come here very often and I decided that, uh, you know, earlier when I used to come to Kashmir, I used to always give a break. Because there are so many things to do here, meetings, meeting friends, official meetings, etc. But, uh, you know, now I've decided that uh, I'll shoot in the mornings and I'll then conduct my business of the day later on. So here I am wearing warm clothes in the heart of Kashmir. And uh, this is all for you. Now, you know, I've been predicting for a very long time about this uh, Chinese pressure along the line of actual control. So the line of actual control is very, very long. It's, it's, it's three and a half thousand or so kilometers long. And it meanders over some of the most hostile and toughest territory in the world. Now, according to the latest satellite pictures, what the Chinese have done is they have started uh, building structures on their own side, of course, on their own side, but in, you know, across the Uttarakhand area. So, if you roughly see the alignment of, of the line of actual control, so there is Uttarakhand, there is Himachal, there is Ladakh, there is Sikkim, there is, uh, uh, you know, Arunachal Pradesh, etc. So, you have seen them across the LAC in Arunachal. You have seen them across the LAC in, you know, Tamang. So, it happened in Tamang, you are aware of that. Then you saw them in Sikkim, right? You are aware of Doklam. And then you saw them in Ladakh, of course. Uh, you are aware of Galwan. And then I also said that they will come to Uttarakhand and Himachal and this I predicted more than one and a half, two years back. That they are going to come there. And today the Chinese, what they have done is, in their own territory, in in the part that is controlled by China, there they have started building structures. But unfortunately, those structures face Uttarakhand. So this is what the Chinese are trying to do. And uh, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I, I have a thought process. And I could be wrong because there are people senior to me in the armed forces who have decades more uh, seniority. Uh, they have 100 times more knowledge. And I'm not a great expert in all this. But what comes to my mind, logically speaking, is you know, if you go to China or if you go against China dollar to dollar, it's always going to be a losing proposition because China has a bigger checkbook, let's face it. And China can get more hardware because of a bigger checkbook. We have to do something that is out of the box. We need to do something that will hurt China very badly and at the same time force China to withdraw. I often give this example, you know, whenever I'm talking to the... Uh, the, the Chanakya Forum and the Chanakya Dialogues team, I always give them this example that if there is a wrestler who is bigger than you, you are also strong, but that wrestler is bigger than you in size. Uh, what is your hope of winning against that wrestler? It could be training, it could be superior technique, it could be bravery, but more than that is the element of surprise. It is the speed at which you move. And if you can move in certain places, if you can rattle China, China is afraid of conflict. This I say with utmost clarity, China is afraid of conflict. China is afraid of the repercussions of conflict because the Chinese, the new generation of Chinese are extremely soft. You know, one kid in one family, they're called little emperors in China. These guys don't want to fight. These young Chinese, they never want to fight. They, they are happy being home, they're alone. And it's an aging population in China. China has a lot of problems, by the way. And the way to counter China is, you know, very simple, may seem a little aggressive, but, you know, China trying to enter into Ladakh, trying to enter into Sikkim or trying to enter into Arunachal Pradesh is also aggressive, right? That the Indian army thwarted them, that the Indian army pushed them back, or that the Indian army did not allow them to come in at all into our territory. That's a separate case altogether. That's another story for another day. But my friends, I think, I think you know, what basically we are looking at is us hitting the Chinese where they least expect it. 
and that is going to rattle the Chinese because Chinese have been mollycoddled by too many people. You know, China will get upset here. China will feel bad. China will react in such a manner. Inscrutable. You don't know what the Chinese are thinking. They are opaque people. You know, there is this element of the unknown. There is nothing unknown. A Chinese is a human being. If you cut him, he will bleed. If you scare him, he will show fear. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I want to say to you. You know what? You have the Chinese merchant vessels roaming around all over, you know. These Chinese merchant vessels. Sink a Chinese merchant vessel. Yeah. Just torpedo. One carrying these fancy iPhones and, you know, uh, these, these, these uh, refrigerators and motorcycles and automobiles all over the world. Just sink one or two. Trust you me when I say this. Just, just sink a couple of them. What is China going to do? China wants to engage with you in the Himalayas. But China's soft underbelly is the oceans. You know the key here. Of course, the Indian Army is doing a fantastic job. The Air Force is doing a fantastic job. And they are, you know, the reason why the Chinese dare not enter India. But I'll tell you the key here is the Indian Navy. This, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you the key here is the Indian Navy. If the Indian Navy can actually slam the Chinese in the sea, sink a couple of their ships, the Chinese will make a lot of noise, you know, when Nancy Pelosi wanted to come to Taiwan and she did come to Taiwan, it was the Chinese media that was saying, we will blow her plane out of the air and stuff like that. What did they do? No, if you come in, we will invade Taiwan. Five or ten congressmen and con congresswomen came. They came to Taiwan. China did nothing. China can do nothing. China can only speak through global times. China can only speak through those lengthy verbose editorials that they were so fond of printing. That's all China can do. And this is what I've said against Pakistan also time and again. Just hammer the life out of Pakistan. There is nothing that the Pakistanis can do. Hammer the life out of China. Just make sure the Chinese bleed. Everything is going to be okay. All these problems that we are facing, all these stresses that we are facing along the line of actual control. I mean, it's miserable out there. Our troops are used to living in such conditions because for our troops, 14,000 feet above sea level is a party because these guys have been in Siachen since donkey's years, since 1984. These guys have been in Siachen. So there is a lot of institutional memory as far as high altitude warfare is concerned in India. But having said that, let me tell you. You see, uh, the key here is different. Yeah, The key here is that China has to be punished. You can't just keep on posting manpower, keep on uh, putting tanks and artillery and fighter jets along the line of actual control. This, this thing has to stop sometime. You know, uh, today it's Uttarakhand. Trust you me, the next stop is Himachal Pradesh. I'm telling you this today. And it will never stop unless you hammer China. And never hammer China along the Himalayas. Hammer China in the seas. Just hammer them. Just sink a couple of Chinese merchant ships or those container carriers with, you know, hundreds of thousands of microwave ovens or whatever. Just torpedo one. You know, if you want to uh, if you want to uh, capture the capture the uh, you know the 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 crew of the ship, that's all right. They needn't be punished for the stupidity of the Chinese Communist Party. But sink the complete vessel, put them on a flight, send them back to China. Do this three four times. The Chinese will also respond, by the way. But the Chinese don't have the stomach for a fight. This I'm saying with all authority. Now I'm going to take you to Pakistan for a while, and how can we not take you to Pakistan, my friends? Uh, you know, Jangir Khan Tareen, Jangir Khan Tareen uh, has launched a new party called Istikham e Pakistan Party or the IPP. Now, Jangir Khan Tareen uh, is an old Imran Khan friend, loyalist, uh, supporter as far as money is concerned. So, he's, he was called the ATM of, of Imran Khan, been giving a lot of money to Imran Khan and also collecting funds for Imran Khan. This guy has launched his own party. And why has he done it? Because Jahangir Tareen is very close to the establishment. And Jahangir Tareen, with the blessings of the Pakistan army, has launched this party. And, uh, you know, they say that all the stalwarts of the Pakistan Tehreek and Saf and, you know, so many other people, they have come and joined this party, uh, including uh, former Sindh Governor Imran Ismail, former PTI financer Alim Khan, former Azad Kashmir Prime Minister Tanvir Ilyas, former ministers Amir Kiani, Ali Zaidi and Faisal Hassan Chauhan, you know Faisal Hassan Chauhan, right? The guy who threatened me and he said that I want to have a debate with Major Gauravarya. Yeah, that Faisal Hassan Chauhan, same guy. Firdaus Hashik Awan, 
سعید اکبر نوانی اینڈ نومن لنگریال فارمر فیڈرل منسٹر فواد چودھری واز آلسو اسپاٹڈ ان دا بیک رو ہی ڈیلیبریٹلی چوز ناٹ ٹو سٹ ان دا اسٹیج ہز ان ایزی باڈی لینگویج گیو وے ٹو اسپیکولیشنز اباؤٹ ہز ڈسیزن جوائن آئی پی پی پرسیوملی انڈر پریشر سو ہو از گیونگ ہم پریشر ہو از گیونگ فواد چودھری پریشر فواد چودھری ہیز بین پریشرائزڈ بائی دا پاکستان آرمی اینڈ فواد چودھری یو نو از اے گائے ہو ہیز چینجڈ ملٹیپل پارٹیز ملٹیپل ٹائمس ان فیکٹ ہی جوائنڈ اینڈ لیفٹ دا کاف لیگ ٹوائس سو ٹوڈے ہی از کوائٹلی سیٹنگ لائک اے تھیف ان دا بیک رو ناٹ وانٹنگ ٹو شو ہز فیس دس مین ہو سیڈ آئی ول گیو اپ مائی لائف فار عمران خان دس مین ہو سیڈ آئی ول آئی ول یو نو سینڈ پیپل اینڈ دس از جہاد اینڈ ویل فائٹ اگینسٹ دا پاکستان آرمی and today this man you must have seen that video of him running away you know from the courthouse fawad chaudhry fat fawad chaudhry 150 kgs of lard trying to run like a rabbit and then he was caught by the cops and he was caught by the agencies and then he was hauled up and then a software was updated that fawad chaudhry so now this fawad chaudhry is now sitting quietly embarrassed in the back row and this is what is happening to the pakistani you see i will just give you a small example and i'm going to keep today's video short Friends, you know what has happened in Pakistan actually. It's very funny yeah, what these Pakistanis do, you know. Every time they... No, all these people have kids. Okay. All these leaders, they're married, they have kids. Name one person who sent his child to face the bullets on 9th of May. Name one Pakistani leader who sent his child and said, fight against the Pakistan army. Go, go to the core commander's house. Go to GHQ Rawalpindi. Go to Sargodha Air Base. Pull down the wall. or push down the wall rather, go and destroy property, you know, nobody told their kids, because their kids are in London, their kids are in New York, they sent the poor people of Pakistan, the poor PTI workers who are now in jail by the way, thousands upon thousands of them, some say 7,000, some say 10,000, I don't have the real figures, I don't know the exact figures, but yeah, these guys were sent to wage war against the state, to wage war against the Pakistani army, and today Imran Khan is not talking, about them at all. He's just some cursory tweets here and there or some statements, but there is no joint effort. And all the people who sent them to fight against the Pakistan army, they have left and already joined somebody else's party. So whenever somebody calls, let us say, uh, 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 you know, uh, Fawad Chaudhary and says, Chaudhary sahab, my son is in jail and you know, you sent him to the core commander's house, but my son is in jail now. Can you save him? And Fawad Chaudhary will simply say, what, which son? Yaar, I, I never sent it. I, I myself have left PTI. Get over it. I have left PTI. So these are the kind of people, you know, now you understand this is typical Pakistani mindset. You send the poor to do your dirty work. That is why it is, I say, a Pakistani mindset. And I'll tell you why. I'll qualify that before I end my video. I am in Kashmir right now. All these so-called jihadis who cross the border to wage quote unquote jihad in Kashmir, all these so-called mujahideen, they were not sons of senior generals or senior politicians because all the general sons, they're in Dubai, they're in Canada, they're in US, they're in UK, they're all over Europe. The multi-millionaires, dollar millionaires, they don't care. For them, jihad is something that can be taken advantage of. Kashmir is something that can be taken advantage of to enrich themselves. That is the reason. So, You see, what they did in Kashmir, they have done the same thing in Pakistan. Send the poor people's son to die. Send the poor people's son to face the bullets. All right? And then send your own children to Oxford and Cambridge to study. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the reality of Pakistan. Thank you very much for watching this video, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be back to Delhi very soon. I promise to record longer videos. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please press like. Subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Jai Hind, Vande Matram, Bharat Mata Ki Jai.